All right, Hoover Hound Dogs, this is Mr. Murphy, and I'm giving you a little tour of the Mount Hood National Forest. We're gonna go ahead through the different stages of forest and how they go from being young forest to old forest, which would be called a climax forest. Here's a little video of where I'm starting from. This is the cabin up in Mount Hood National Forest. As you can see, there's lots of dew all over the trees, fresh rain. It's what makes this forest grow so well. We're looking at a young forest here. That means that there's a many, many hemlock and cedar trees, which are all much, much smaller. You can see how thick the forest is, it's very, very thick. And it's because it's in the very baby stages, very baby stage of a forest. This is an area that has been clear cut and it essentially clear cut to use all the trees for uh, things that humans need for houses and everything else that we use wood for. And it can be necessary, but it's better to actually selectively cut trees so that you don't wipe out a whole area all at once. But this does give us a chance to see what a baby forest looks like. And you can see here, uh, this is a baby hemlock here. You can see the way the, the needles look on there and it's soft. Then also, we have lots of cedar that start growing up too. You can see the cedar needles are much different and these are the ones that have the very nice smell to them. And there are some Douglas fir, but the Douglas fir needs more shade. And so that's why the hemlock and the cedar grow and then they fall down and they decompose and rot into the soil and then allow allowing the Douglas fir to start growing larger and the Douglas fir then starts to grow to be the largest trees and it changes dramatically. Again, this is a young forest. And this is a young child forest, younger forest, which has many smaller trees growing in it. This is a great example of how a lot of the smaller trees fall down, the wind blows them down, and then over time the wetness from the rain and moisture eat away and actually decompose them into the soil, uh, creating more soil that is better and that is part of the forest maturing is actually developing the soil to be really rich in nutrients from things being decomposed into the soil, allowing bigger trees to start to grow. Hemlocks getting larger then, of course, cedar getting larger, of course, creating the shade needed for, you can see the one Douglas fir that's starting to grow up there, which will eventually overtake all of the rest of the trees and create shade and develop into an older forest. Here we are in a teenage forest, I would call it, because you're looking at some larger trees and smaller trees growing together. The smaller trees are the hemlock. They grow first to provide shade for the Douglas fir. The Douglas firs are the larger ones. And as the hemlock provide shade, then the Douglas fir start to grow and grow much larger and faster. And that's really what creates the teenage forest, which has larger trees and smaller trees. And as you can see, there's quite a few smaller trees and there are larger trees because it's still just a teenage forest. It's not a young forest and it's also not an old forest. It's in between. And then, of course, lots of ferns and understory, which 
hold in moisture for the roots to create a healthy soil for the forest. And here's a good example of a smaller hemlock that is growing now. And this is a hemlock which might have grown before some of the, the Douglas fir, but then the Douglas fir, as it got enough shade, started growing much, much faster and much, much quicker. As, as example, this one right here that we're looking at, that really big round. So a teenage forest, not young, but not old. Uh, here is a pine cone, obviously an older one because it's got fungus growing on it. Uh, which it, which I found underneath the long needled pine, and I'll look it up to make sure that's where it actually comes from. But uh, this is, of course, how the pine and fir trees reproduce themselves. They drop this these pine cones down, which actually have nuts inside them, and then they reseed themselves and grow again. And you can see how different this one is compared to this one which I know is definitely a Douglas fir pine cone. So they are very different in many different ways. These are the seeds of the pine and fir tree. This is a young adult forest, which has gotten past the stage of the trees being so close together. You can see how a lot of the older trees are getting bigger the smaller trees had fallen down and decomposed, rotted into the soil. And now we're looking here at trees that are a little more spread out. And that allows for the ones that are left to continue to get bigger and bigger so that the nutrients in the soil is saved for them. You can also see how thick the understory is here of ferns, really holding in that moisture and all of the other kinds of plants that grow underneath in the shade of the forest. Here is a cross section of a very large tree that was cut down. It looks like maybe it was even cut down maybe only one year or two years ago. But uh, this is really, really big and a great example of how trees grow. And a tree grows essentially like a candle. When you dip it into wax, it puts a whole new layer of wax on the, on the outside of the candle. Well, a tree grows the same way where every year it grows a new ring and essentially develops and gets larger and, lar and more round. You can see how, how large this one actually is. Really, really big. Um, I counted the rings, and the rings of the tree are a little over 450. So this tree is could be even a little older than that, but at least 450 years old. And that would be close to an old growth tree. They can definitely get older than that. They can get much, much older than that, but um, because they get cut down so quickly and so fast, we don't allow them to grow big enough. And that's one reason why we want to think about how much wood that we use and how fast we build houses and how many houses that we actually need and how big the houses should be. You can see the rings here when I get closer. The center rings there are larger because the the tree was growing faster at that rate. Whereas on the outside of it, you can see the rings are much, much closer together. So once again, growing just like you're dipping a candle in wax and putting a whole new layer of wax on it, a tree grows the same way where every year it puts a whole new layer of tree and bark on the outside of it. And the bark actually mainly protects it from fire. So you can see how thick the bark is there at that part. And that's not actually any of the rings of the tree. That's just the bark that protects the, the tree. Whereas the rings actually start right in here. This is where the rings are actually starting. 
And that's how you can tell how old the tree is. Here's an example of a definite old growth Douglas fir. It takes a long time for these to grow and a, a forest has to mature through the process of being able to let them exist for that long. And it does that just through the different cycles that I've already shown you, which is where a smaller tree grows and falls down and allows the, the other trees to start growing and they spread out more and there's less trees because they're not so close together. So then the trees that are left can really grow to be very, very big. And you can see how large this one is. An old growth Douglas fir. are in a mature old growth forest you can see how different it looks with the trees much further apart a lot more ferns and things growing on the understory and the, the trees are much 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 bigger this allows for a lot of different kinds of species to live in a forest like this because it's so rich and nutrients so rich in energy this here is a Douglas fir that's grown to be very very big you can see how thick its bark is I can fit my hand back behind this piece here and you can just see that's what it's so thick we are looking down into a mature forest and you can just see how this older mature forest really has a lot more space around the trees and there's not as many as close together and that's because they basically have grown big enough where they are the ones that are using the nutrients from the soil and you can see the understory growth of lots of bushes and ferns that grow down there. So you're really seeing how spread out the forest is when it becomes a mature forest and it's really important that we leave large sections of this because the trees cannot survive if there's just one big tree all by itself. They actually need other trees that are just as big to survive around it to create the type of living environment that they can survive in because they depend on each other. Here we are in a little bit different forest environment uh, being right on a small stream flowing by here. And uh, this is a great example of how one of the other trees we learned about, the maple tree, if we look closely here, we can see the maple tree leaf. Uh, the maple tree grows where there's a lot of moisture and water. So it explains how trees like to grow in different areas. Uh, we don't see that in the city so much because in the city, it's completely controlled by humans and uh, any tree that you see in the city was planted usually by a human and uh, so they don't necessarily grow where they want to grow. They grow wherever a human puts them. But uh, here you can see how in a natural forest uh, the maple trees like to grow where there's a lot of moisture and water. Uh, whereas the other trees we've been looking at are fir trees or pine trees that can uh, grow on a hillside where it's not next, right next to the water. They don't necessarily need as much water all the time. Uh, a great reason why maple trees, and we also learn about uh, oak trees, uh, why they need a lot of water is because they lose their leaves. And uh, it takes a lot of energy to grow those leaves and then uh, let them fall off and grow them back again. So you can see here, on the ground, you know, these uh, maple leaves have fallen off there and are decomposing into the soil, giving nutrients back into the soil. Little small organisms are eating them and then uh, returning the energy back into the soil. So here we are in a maple forest and also many other kinds of leaf trees, which are called deciduous trees. Uh, that are here and 
really gives you an idea how different it looks. Wherever the water is, you'll find lots of maple trees. That would have to be out in the natural forest.